Playing for LMC Productions. Um, LMC, I know that they can hear us. Uh, I don't know if there's anything we have to do on our end. I started they, it. They sent a message through chat saying, just let just to let you know, we're now live on LMC, just not on YouTube. Okay, fair enough. Okay, okay so we're well, good. Then, then we're for, for public purposes, at least we're on the record. And, uh, and I, I, th I think the proper procedure is to open the meeting. So I'll make a motion to open the meeting. So moved Second. on the Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting's open. Okay, so the first order of business is where whether it would be useful to us to discuss applications with without the applicant present. Of course, they can hear and respond to any they can hear and and take into account what we say but just as as a review for ourselves in a conversation with staff i've sort of as i think through it i'm not sure that that squares well with the experience we've had with applications i think most of what we want to talk about we want to have the applicant actually respond to us in real time and a conversation that's strictly between us and and staff may not be of use but i want to hear other people's thinking about that Thomas Meyer, well, or go ahead, Dorian, please. Since I've been on the commission the longest out of all of us, it's been problematic because we don't have complete materials. So I don't know how the board wants to proceed with this, but if I had the choice and I were continuing after next month's meeting, I'd like to have a work session prior to every meeting to go over the application to make sure we have complete materials because once we start our review, we often get lost in what we have, what we don't have, and it's very difficult to follow along as to where we've been and what we have. <clears throat> I don't know how everybody else feels about it, but um, complete applications are when we start our review. That's in our code. Yeah, I would, if I may, Tom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you go ahead. I think that, I think it's fine to have, I, I have a little problem with the idea of actually discussing an application because I think, particularly if there's supposed to be a hearing, now some of them aren't hearings, but, but I think for purposes of completeness, that's one thing. You just go over it and say what's missing and direct the applicant. <clears throat> and maybe there's a procedure you can do that's not even, that's even before this, because let's assume you found something was missing now. If the, hearing, if the meeting is in two days, that's not gonna really necessarily help anybody. <clears throat> but I think there should be a procedure to make sure the application is complete. I have a little hesitation about the idea of discussing an application when the applicant hasn't had an opportunity to present anything or to be there and participate in a hearing. Um, it really is, um, it raises some questions, I think, with regard to the open meetings, but because the heart of the open meetings law is not that they're open to the public, it's for deliberations as well as the result to be decided. Well, if I, I can just, it, just it, it complicates everything. If I can just tell you that again, the intent behind the work session that there would be no deliberations. It would just be conversation. Again, the applicant would be listening. Sort of I'll give you an example. There's one of your application. One of your applicants is actually listening now, and it better prepares them to come and be in um, positions them to respond to you at your actual meeting. But again, it's your call. However, you want to work it. So. Well, I have a question about though, that though, um, William, and that is around, you know, basically what David just said, and that is, let's say we do determine that something is missing from an application. Is there really enough time for them to respond? And what would we do if we found it incomplete? Would we remove it from the, from the meeting that's happening in two days because it's incomplete? Or, you know, that, 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 that's where I get caught in the mire of this thing is, you know, I, I see the purpose um, but I don't know that if the result is actually beneficial to anybody, 
um, in enough time. So that's what that's how I stand. Well, I think I, I think a couple things. I think one, if we standardized when you have your work session, it doesn't have to be the day before. It can be a week before, whatever. If you standardize it, you give the applicant time to submit whatever materials that would make their application complete. And then the applicant would come to the meeting in a position to talk about the, the information that they have submitted. So I think that would help. I think um, regardless of which way you go, I think we should standardize your work session. I think you should have a work session before every meeting, regardless of whether or not you want to hear from applicants or not, or how you want to do that. Well, I, I think that I, I hear you, but I think that, that that would require us getting the materials much sooner if we're going to give them enough time. So, you know, if we're only getting the materials, if we got them this time Thursday night, when were we going to have the meeting? I mean, even having it tonight, it was a stretch for me to, you know, you know, review everything and get through everything for tonight. So, well, I would, my suggestion would be to have a submission deadline 21 days before your meeting. If your submission deadline is out 21 days before the meeting um, and you standardize your work session in between the 21st day and when you actually have your meeting, there's ample time for staff to get you the stuff, you know, before well in advance of your actual work session. Yeah, I would agree with that. So if you, if there was a 21 day before, and then your staff could turn it around within seven days that we would have it within 14 days of the meeting. And then, you know, we would fit a meeting somewhere in between there, maybe 10 days out that would give, you know, the applicant enough time to actually do something about the things that we're missing. I'm, I would support that hundred percent. Well, doesn't this really beg the question of what's the purpose of the work session? Because I could just to see, just to see, uh, see if one arguing that, it should be after the hearing because then we could deliberate during a work session without, if you will, the, the input of um, other people there. We, don't, we would have received everything. On the other hand, if it's before the meeting, then I have a little trouble getting involved in discussion about the substance of it. I think if, I don't know how that's done here, but Tom, do you look at the applications? I know with zoning, we used to look at the applications. I know when I, when I used to chair, I would look at them <clears throat> and I had a standard letter that would go out a week before and say, listen, you know, it's a great application. I'm not going to the merits of it, but here's what you're missing. And if this isn't in in the three days, you know, you're, you're going to be on the next month or I just bounce them to the next month mm -hmm. because that makes sense. But, but I'm not sure we all need to meet for that. I think, but you know better, I'm new to this, but... I think that um, if the purpose of the meeting, the work session, it's sometimes good after there's been everyone's been there, you now consider everything and you actually deliberate at them because you don't need the public input for that. Um, and the applicants have, the applicants already spoken. The only thing now is to decide. And that lets everything settle in and we can discuss that. So I think you have to kind of go a little bit to what is the purpose of the work session? Is it, to, it seems silly to meet to me that we're meeting to for are they in compliance that they submit what they're supposed to submit that that that's another burden and i think but i don't know yeah Maybe. yeah i have a question around that too like is isn't that isn't that review supposed to happen in the planning department or is you know is or is, or is that responsibility being pushed onto this commission right. where, we have, where we have to determine whether or not they're accurate or not when all we should be doing is actually just we should be getting complete applications. I don't. I don't know if we should get caught in the mire right. of, of whether it's whether it's complete or not. <clears throat> that's correct. Um, I agree with that. I mean, that is a responsibility of staff, and that's what staff does. The applicant. Um, the I think you know it's it's not just a matter of of staff reviews it to make sure that it is complete from having a standardized list. But sometimes there are things that that are not necessarily standard that the board still may want and require, and there's no way for staff to ask for that information um, without getting. Um, so, for example, we, staff could ask for something, and if it's not standard, <clears throat> the applicant will give staff pushback. Say, hey, "Listen, well, you know what? You as staff, you're asking for it. Show me that in writing." Staff can't really show you because it's something that's probably a little abnormal, but it's still needed. 
However, if the board says it and the applicant knows it ahead of time, then the applicant, I think, would um, it would be strong. It would stand for a stronger situation. I think the applicant would be more willing to to comply with the situation. Well, I think, be, as it relates to deliberations, I, I think, again, in my experience, deliberations are something that has to happen in a public meeting. At the work session, you're just having a conversation about when I when I mean public meeting, I mean at the your regular meeting. The work session to me is just to have a conversation. You can begin to talk about things that you may need. You can um, get into, in, again, in my experience, the merits of it. And again, just say, you know, staff, hear staff's comments. You will have a conversation. The applicant comes to the meeting and is ready to address whatever. That's the extent of it. But again, it's up to you, however you want to handle it. Right. Well, could 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 there be a process in place, though, that, you know, only in those unusual circumstances would those come to the to the board? Like we wouldn't have to go through every one of them. You know, we that that, that would fall on the planning department. But when you did hit these special you know, circumstances, then, yes, of course, the board would weigh in and say that, yes, this needs to be done or not be done. But I agree with David that I don't think that we need to go through every single one um, because I, I don't I don't think that's in our it's in our charter. Yeah, the hard the hard thing about that, Martin, is we don't we don't have a procedure that allows us to sort of deal with uh, you know deal with something in an unscheduled way. I'm, I'm also on the board of a charity where if something comes up in between meetings, we can just get unanimous consent. And I know there are a lot of sort of administrative matters that if I needed to just email everybody and get seven yeses. Uh, that wouldn't be such a problem, but the law doesn't permit us to operate that way. So, you know, okay. we kind of have to schedule everything in advance. Um, I think there's plenty of room for just, you know, having a conversation between either the chair or, or the vice chair with the, with the, um, with the staff about uh, completeness of applications and dealing with them that way, which is sort of what we've, you know, what we've, what we've been doing um, just in terms of, of ministerial stuff. Uh, I have probably not been as aggressive about bouncing things that uh, may not be complete as I could be. Um, so maybe that's on me. All right. I, One thing, if I could just point out, the, um, there's, no, there, there's no reason you can't deliberate. You don't have to call it a work session. You have a meeting. It's just not a public meeting. It's not for public hearings. So you just schedule a meeting, whether it's for discussing whatever you want to discuss. That may be good after the meeting when you when you don't get to it, because uh, sometimes deliberations. I've always found sometimes deliberations take place after a lot of new things have happened, and this way you can sit back and if you're going to have that meeting, if you need it, if you don't need it, you cancel it. I mean, I don't know. All I'm, all I'm saying is I'm not sure I understand the purpose because I do think that for completeness of an application, that can certainly be done. Tom, you can oversee that. I would think and. It's really a matter of, is it right there? There's always going to be new things that are needed, but that's the purpose of the meeting to hear them. I think Seamus has been waiting with extraordinary patience. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I don't think what I'll say is very different. Um, one, I would like to say that I'm a big fan of the work session period, um, because I do think that we end up with very long meetings where people get tired towards the end. And also that we don't you know, get to things that I think would be good work that this commission could be doing outside of just applicants. So I think it's good. I think that the main priority should be those items, you know, tree laws, our application, the LWRP uh, update. Um, Cause I think those are things that, I, you know, I feel and maybe other commissioners as well, I would like to see progress on those, you know, over the time uh, when I'm on the commission. So I think that should be the primary purpose. I think there's two things that I could think of that might be useful um, on specific applicants. Um, and I think this would be pretty consistent with Doreen, David, and Martin, really, which is um, if something new is coming up, I don't think it makes sense to spend much time. I think we do our best work there with the applicant present. Um, but if anyone just has a question like, hey, do they even have this permit? It gives us a chance to be like, yeah, it might have been hard to see, but it's there. Uh, or no, I don't think they do. And then we decide what to do with that. Uh, the other is I actually think it could be helpful not to necessarily have a lot, long discussion, but if a... Um, applicant has been before us once or twice or three times and is coming again, just to recoalesce on where we're at. Hey, last time that they were here, uh, we asked them to come back with this. 
and that's likely the primary, um, you know, uh, purpose this time, or, or just kind of a recheck in, uh, particularly on one where we've ha had discussion numerous times. Uh, at that point, you know, we could uh, just all get together. So that's that's what I'll add on the topics. I will second almost a hundred percent of what Seamus just said. Yeah, that I I I think basically everybody's agreeing with you, Seamus. That makes a lot well, of sense. Okay. Like this is is we have rules and procedures which are clearly spelled out and we do have the opportunity for special meetings for quote unquote work sessions to do the work that we can't catch up on and we also have the opportunity for a I forgot what it's called in our rules and procedures it's not actually on the agenda but it's a preliminary not a preliminary review but um, you know if an applicant doesn't have all the information um, we can do a cursory review. I forgot what it's called. I could look it up, but um, you know that might be the opportunity not to open up uh, and move forward on the actual application. That can all that all can be done in our regular meetings, but we can call a special meeting when we need to when we get backlogged because that's in our rules and procedures. And as far as the completeness of the application, in our rules and procedures and our application. It shouldn't be on our agenda unless at least the basic information that's on the checklist and what we require in our application we have. Um, additional information we can always ask for, uh, you know, and that's our prerogative to make the application complete. Um, so we have the rules and procedures, our codes, and it's all spelled out. So personally, I don't think a work session is necessary we can call a special meeting for items that we have to get to mm -hmm. it's in our rules and procedures i circulated that last month when i couldn't attend very helpful thanks okay so i i think it's probably probably the best course of action is just to take under advisement the discussion we've had and uh and uh, we may discuss this a little further at the end of uh, our, our Wednesday regularly scheduled public meeting. The, uh, we can move on and the approval of minutes is one of those things that I, I wanna take a little time to go through them and I didn't get as much time with the minutes as I would like. So uh, if, unless anybody really has a problem with it, I'm gonna punt approval of the June 17 minutes to, uh, to our meeting two days from now. That's fine. Um, the, the two applicant specific items on the agenda, I think we just had a discussion about, you know, why it doesn't, why, why we're not gonna, why we're not going to get into the meat of those applications now. Um, but there is one thing that is strictly a staff matter. I wanted to check in on schedule with, uh, with council. Christy. Yeah, no, I'm here. Yeah, we, um. We wanted to get uh, we wanted to get some legal research on uh, on the applicable sewer issues, and I just wanted to check in on on schedule for that because uh, I don't want to have the uh, 1167 Grecian folks uh, come before us and have us uh, tell them, look, we can't make any progress until you know we have uh, till we have a legal memo on this. Um, well, I think there's two factors to it, which we discussed previously last week. One of the which is that the um, village manager and the assistant village manager have actually asked the county to take a look at those sewer lines uh, due to the information that we got about the possible leakage. Um, I, as far as I know, we haven't received anything from the county yet, any indication as to whether or not they're they're going to want to pursue that and see if there is a problem since it is so close to the wetlands. Um, that won't necessarily co color our legal research, but I think we do, or it's up to the, the commission as well, um, whether you would like to wait to see how that's handled by the county or at least see whether there's some type of indication as to how the county wants to handle it. Um, in the meantime, I have spoken to um, Brian Hildenbrand, and so we are aware of what we're looking into and we've started that process. So I think it would be fair to say that for the November meeting, there should be um, something for the uh, commission to review. Okay, so that, does the applicant yeah. yet know that they're likely off calendar for uh, for October? Because I think it's pretty clear they're off calendar for October. Um, I believe so. I don't know if they'll have any pushback about that. I know Kristen Motel is here, but it is a work session, so I'm not sure yeah. if you'd want to hear from her. But 
Mm -hmm. uh, I believe she's aware that that I, you know, I think the hope was that they want to figure out what's going on with their application so that they can see whether they need to amend their plans. But they also know that the county will be looking into this. So everyone knows at this point what what question I ask right before we take a vote. Do you have all the information that you need to render your consistency determination? I know for sure that I do not, and I know for sure what I am looking to 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 have in front of me to to get those answers, uh, Martin. Yeah, also to note that the uh, uh, the file that's been put up there about the incomplete DEC application as well for that property. So that's also affecting their, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Martin. Yep. Thank, thank you for remembering that. I didn't have that in my notes. And and uh, in addition to the DEC memo, it does, the DEC is asking for our um, consistency determination on this or feedback within their memo, and I'd like to point out that I've searched all the documents, and maybe the planners can help me, but I cannot find the topographical survey with uh, special flood hazard areas noted on them that we're supposed to receive as part of a complete application. It says so in the record in Ms. Motel's um, initial submission and even the second submission, but that topographical survey is not within our records. And we haven't even evaluated the uh, flood, flood zone information on the property yet. Uh, we need to get back to the DEC with something on this. They're requesting our, uh, our feedback. Wait, are they requesting feedback or they want to know our consistency? Because those are uh, hang on a second. That's a bit uh, of a chicken egg the... problem. We're waiting for them on the permit. So, yeah, and, they, and really. if I'm not mistaken, they sent a notice of uh, notice of incompletion. And notice of incompletion incomplete application. Regarding hang this. on. A... Hang on. When they notify us, we have thirty days to respond. So It says, the proposed project is located, we know that. By copy of this letter, staff requests the village confirm in writing whether the proposed project is consistent with the adopted LWRP. Well, okay, yeah. we don't know that until we vote consistency. Uh, it's just, for well, I'm, I'm going to suggest that it's just as incomplete for us as it is for them and maybe we could work out a better time frame if their if their basis for saying it's incomplete is that we haven't it's not pardon it's not that's not their basis the yeah. basis for it being incomplete is that uh they're talking about how the how the house is situated and that it can't be situated any other way or there's a, there's a whole bunch of different things in here Mm. There are a whole bunch of other things, and it's similar to what we have discussed in our <clears throat> in our deliberations. But what they are saying, the proposed project is located within the adopted LWRP in the village of Marinick. According to their law, I'm paraphrasing, the DEC is required to coordinate with the local government responsible for the LWRP in order to confirm consistency with the LWRP. By copy of this letter, staff requests the village confirm in writing whether the proposed project is consistent with the adopted LWRP. Doreen, I don't, I don't, um, have, that, I don't have that letter. Where did you, where did you, because that's separate from this, uh, this thing that I'm reading. So where, where within the of incomplete application, it's on page two under coastal zone management. All we can respond to that is that we have not yet made a determination. No, actually, what we've done in the past with applicants, whether it be for local consistency or otherwise, is deemed it not consistent due to incompleteness. We've done that before. Our commissions did that all the time years ago. What was that again? Doreen, Doreen is this a, a chicken and egg issue that comes up? I don't know. I've seen it yet where it where the, you know, we like to review things once everything else is done, but, the, but we are actually part of the loop to get them. Is that kind of what you're saying? We're part of their loop. They can't move yeah. forward 
they can't move forward with seeker until consistency is done. Because it That's did look like to a, me, unless we, could, unless we deem it NAGDEC or type two, in which case. We don't do seeker on this. They we are do. Not the lead, we are not the lead agency for oh. seeker on this. So it looked to me, and Martin, I think this is what you were saying. I mean, it looks to me like there's a bunch of other things that are requested as well. Um, but I did see this component of the letter. Yeah, I see it now. I, I yeah. missed the part about the village uh, mm -hmm. needing to respond. Maybe Mr. Long could put that up so we can all see it on the second page. Yes, I'll, I'll do that now. Give me one second. So, so this is how this is the coordinate. DEC always coordinates with us. Okay, their regulations are different than ours in the wetland permit and Can consistency. Yep. Yes. Okay. Most uh, own management. Yeah. So there, are, there are eight things that um, Commissioner um, Chair Burt. Uh, there are the eight things that come up here before it talks about our what, what our responsibility is. Yep. Okay. All right, we're gonna have to. Um, we... On Wednesday, we should definitely consider um, getting back to them to let them know maybe that we're in the same boat and we we are not finding it consistent due to com incomplete application materials. Well, we're gonna have to That's respond to this in a timely manner. So, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. So this is going to have to be uh, this is going to have to come up for discussion um, on Wednesday, and we'll deal with the letter. That may be the only thing that we're able to effectively move forward on this uh, on this application, but we'll have to deal with the letter. All right, uh, let's keep moving because that's as far as we're going to get with that. Um, hey, Chairman Burt, quick a quick question, uh, if you don't mind. Um, I, I just wanted to confirm that I'm seeing this right. Do, do you does, do you guys all agree? And, they, and this is the type of thing that I think is you know, briefly helpful about these work sessions. For each of these two applications, there's only one new document and it, it, for each. Do you guys agree with, okay. I was just wanna make sure I wasn't missing a cache of documents somewhere. Okay, thanks. Sorry for the interruption. Yeah, you know, we've, and, but we know for sure for, for 1167 Grecian that we're awaiting on a number of things. And, and those things for speaking for myself are necessary for me to make a determination. Jaron, um, is there, with regard to that Grecian point, was the, when I went there and I took pictures of them, which I have, there's a pipe going along into the water there. And I don't, I don't recall that being addressed. I'm sorry, I don't have my files. I started to work non-remotely two days a week and that's very confusing <laughs> where I leave things. But uh, uh -huh. sorry, <laughs> always the wrong place. But there's, uh, did they address that? I don't recall that being addressed. There's a pipe from the property going into the water that Drain something. I have no idea what. I'm happy to. Well, sure. If I may, you know, the fact that you're bringing up bringing it up, the applicant is hearing it, and so come Wednesday, the applicant should be prepared to address the matter. Okay. Well, I thought we weren't going to have the applicant on our agenda because we have outstanding information. Huh. Well, unfortunately, we also have a, a letter from DEC that requires that we deal with it, you know, more expeditiously. And uh, we don't really have, um, and we can do it. We can do the, we can do that just by letter, but then all we can do is I can send out a draft and people can respond uh, Chair, just, yeah. Would you like either myself or planning staff to contact Victoria Lawrence? I think it was Victoria Lawrence at DEC and just confirm. I think her letter needs clarification because it looks like she lists eight items that are necessary, but then also these two extra items, I can't tell whether she's holding up the application for your determination or whether um, it's something that they ultimately will need, but won't hold up their determination. That's probably a useful call. Act it, 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 maybe I could try to make time to do that together uh, tomorrow. We can I could say with, this tomorrow. I can say with confidence they're not holding it up because of our consistency determination, but let's get it from her. Okay, yeah, that would be useful. All right, let's try to call them tomorrow and, and get clarification on that point. Okay. Because if if and and also on the timing of the letter, if you know if, if depending on what they say, uh, there may be nothing that we need to do 
uh, Wednesday on this. Okay. okay. I don't think we have any, I don't think we can make any progress right now on, on 652 shore acres. Uh, I agree. I mean, there's no new documents, right? So it's, um, I don't even know what we would discuss. I agree. Do you want a resolution prepared? Actually, we have something missing. The topographical survey with the special flood hazard area, not in the documents at all. And it's important because I looked at the um, the uh, elevation certificate and I'm a little confused as to uh, what's going on there. So just to clarify, Chair Burt, uh, you said shore acres, but we're actually talking about Grecian, correct? No, 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 we we've moved on. Oh, okay. Gre Grecian, we know where we are. Uh, we know there are things outstanding, and the only thing that we that that we can do until uh, until we have more information from uh, from county and staff is to address the DEC's letter, which we're going to do by uh, try to get some clarification on uh, on the phone on what exactly they need and what exactly the timeline is for them and whether they're waiting for us to wait for them. Uh, so we'll we'll know whether we have anything to discuss on Wednesday night on Wednesday night. Uh, we've moved on to 652 Shore Acres. Yeah, thanks for clarifying. I, did, I got lost in this this week. <laughs> All right, so I'm Gloria, sure you said yeah, you, we don't have new information posted, but what's missing from the application is the topographical survey with the special flood hazard area documented on it. And as I said, the elevation certificate is very difficult to understand without that survey. Because it's uh, in an AE, I believe, off the top of my head, 12. And there's I think, I, I think that's right. I think I read that earlier today, Dorian. Yeah, AE 12, 13. Now, I went on the village website to see uh, what, you know, the special flood hazard area is. Uh, and I'm not going to say, since this is a work session, um, what I saw, but I'll share that with everybody on Wednesday night. And uh, I have some other questions about the flood zone uh, in that area and what's proposed to be done. Because the, our flood zone laws really need to be looked at as to what they're proposing, because it, it deals with policies 11, 12, and 17. Okay, let's, uh, uh, can we move on to the administrative actions? Or does anybody right. else have something on the, on the applicant issues? Did you want a resolution for 652? I, it's, it's probably fair to have one ready without, you know, without prejudging for anybody that they have the information necessary to, to cast a vote. I'm not saying anybody does or should, um, right. but it's the, the safe course is to have resolutions prepared. Okay. Uh, William, I'm, I'm getting a lot of, um, I'm getting a lot of distortion in your audio. Not better. Uh, yeah, well, you're you're muted now, so we can't hear you. I'm gonna call in. Ah, call in. He asked if all of you could access the items on Novus. Yes, I was able to. Yeah. I'll give William a, a second to get his audio. Okay. Are you guys hearing my mouse clicking away here? Because I don't have much room. Sorry. <laughs> it's, yeah, I, I can hear it now that you say it. I, I don't find it distracting. Okay. I had a partner with a bad habit of typing right next to the phone on conference calls. So I have a, I have a high tolerance for other people's work noises. Or a built-in filter. <laughs> I'm at my desk, so I don't have much room. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. You can. Can you hear me now? Yes. Much better. Much better. Okay. Okay, you were asking whether we were all able to access the materials. Speaking for myself, I was with no difficulty. Okay. On Nova um, Agenda, yes, but uh, the planning side, I have difficulty logging in at times. I don't know why. I mean, um, but the only, well, I, I don't know why that is. You, you, the only, so unfortunately, you were the only person who's, um, Who's had the issue? I don't know what's what's going on with that. I can't I don't tell either. you. Um, Word, but that you know, as long as it's on Novus Agenda, I can get to everything. Well, I just want to point out that the Novus Agenda is not. I don't post that until we get closer to the meeting. The Nov the Novus account that I sent with the uh, where you have to log in, it's only for you as board members, and it allows you to see things as I as planning staff post them in real time. So if we posted something today, well, as long as the link is open, you'd be able to see it as soon as we post it. Whereas if you went through the uh, agenda system uh, that's posted uh, via the, the village's website, that's not posted until actually, you know, myself, the chair, uh, Amber, and uh, Christy, you know, we've kind of gone through the agenda to make sure everything is, is, is what it's supposed to be. Well, that's usually okay. done by Friday, right? That's definitely done by the Friday before your meeting. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. So, okay. So, are we? Uh, can we move on to to the administrative issues now? We've got the first thing that we've got up on our agenda that we keep kicking over from meeting to meeting, and I'd I'd like to uh, advance the ball on is the uh, the amendments to the tree ordinance. Um, I've gone through it. It makes, we had previously had a whole bunch of stuff that we tried to incorporate into the, um, into the, into the new wetlands law, which is the next item. Most of that is dealt with in the tree ordinance. Um, and uh, I went through it and I, it's not obvious to me that, uh, well, I went through it and I, and I think uh, I understand it well enough to know what I want to do with it. So I'm going to open it up to other people's comments. I, I had a question in that procedurally. Um, has the Board of Trustees done seeker on this? Um, has a public meeting started? And we don't have a coastal assessment form because that's the way we advise the Board of Trustees on consistency. Um, I don't know... You know, what the purpose of our review and getting back to them is at this point. I don't think they had a public meeting on this yet, have they? So they typed it as a type two. William, I know as planner, has a different recommendation for the Board of Trustees that it should be um, an unlisted action. I don't know if that recommendation has been made to them yet. If it was an unlisted action, you would be looking at it with the if it's a type two action, my understanding is you're not looking at a consistency, you're just looking at it um, for comments. Uh, if I'm wrong in that, please welcome to tell me otherwise. Uh, the public hearing was supposed to open on September, was it September 28th? Um, mm -hmm. I know that I think what they did is they technically opened it and adjourned it because the tree committee was getting a lot of feedback on the law and they were taking those comments into consideration and we're going to go back not to the drawing board but to to take another look at the law um, some of those comments did include planning board's comments so they would also take into consideration hczms um, at this time so i don't think you have to hold off your review until they they come back from their discussion but i know that it has been postponed essentially except that we don't know if we're reviewing to comment or voting consistency well like i said right now they have already typed it as a type two so if you're going to go with what they've typed it as is you're just providing comments if they ultimately choose to change their seeker determination and some listed then at that point you would be typing it for consistency okay or excuse me, reviewing it for consistency All right. Typically, when we provide feedback um, that is that is merely comment, uh, we do it by letter. Um, 
we and it's easy enough to do that sort of offline by everybody sending comments to the chair i'll centralize them uh put them in a letter uh i can circulate for comment as long as we don't all look at it and deliberate on it together as long as it's just out from me to you back from you to me uh so i don't really have comments on this um but if other folks do um it does it does a lot of what I was trying to do with the with the wetlands law and it does it I think more succinctly than I had managed to so uh, if other folks have comments uh, what I'd like to do is just have everybody send the comments to me and I will centralize it in one letter uh, and uh, then people can comment on the letter before we send it off we should be able to turn that around in just a few days Hey, Mr. Chair, do you want the, you want the comments to come to you, or should the comments come to staff for staff to centralize? Um, if it's up to you, I tend I tend to want it to I I tend to want it to read the way I'd write it. Uh, I have no problem with staff taking it for a shot at it. Um, I'm I'm good at it. <laughs> If you, if you want to take the first shot, that's fine. Um, I'm just telling you, it, it, I, I will want it to end up reading the way I write things. But other than that, uh, but, I, but I have no problem with you taking the first cut. Either, you know, com centralizing comments, we just have to, we just have to not deliberate. It can't be a round table. It's got to go, you know, from each commissioner individually. Yeah, I, 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 I I also uh, don't really have any comments. I like it, um, but you know, just curious if anyone thinks this particular intersection with, you know, our commission that's worth the de debate. Otherwise, I, I really don't have any comments either, and, and like your path forward, I guess. I mean, it certainly intersects. It's especially around um, seven seven eight forty four uh, around um, around the different rules for cutting in. Uh, wetlands as distinct from other protected trees. Mm -hmm. um, the reason I have no comments is because I agree with the way they've done it. Right. I yeah, do have a, yeah. I have a question on wording when laws are written. Is there a real difference between the word shall and must? <laughs> this is a Bob Spolino special because everyone goes crazy because he changes shall to must. And he, the way that his view is that it shouldn't be so legalese, you should be able to read it as almost as if you'd say it. And so he has, he is a, it's a, it's one of his things, I guess, that he changes all the, the shells to must. So there is not a real difference. They essentially mean the same thing. Well, I've heard I've heard the zoning board really use the term when it says shall, it means you absolutely shall. I, I just asked that question because, you know, I don't think laws are up for interpretation. What's read is read and what it says it says. However, you know, I don't think we want to get into problems. The other question I had is is on 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 probably has nothing to do with our commission, but in reviewing this. How will the village determine the boundaries of a property owner's property and village property in 318.72? By what methodology? Um, and in B1, it says that the, the village manager or his designee, without notice to the property owner on private property, can go onto property and can remove the tree if it's dangerous and bill the property owner. And I, I think that's an overreach of, in my opinion, of authority um, in doing so. I think our current code reads that uh, the property owner is notified, you know, if there's a dangerous or hazardous tree. And also for insurance purposes, uh, you know, a neighbor would be notifying a neighbor about that too. So I'm not understanding how the village can come on private property and evaluate a tree. And the way the code reads to me, even have somebody come on your property and cut it down and you get the bill. 
it says, they have, been, it says they have 30 days during they, they are does. they are notified and they're given 30 days if you read the language in uh let me pull it up in in uh Yeah, I'm reading, uh, I'm reading 318.7c. Yeah, I got to pull it up. I got to get it. I'm slow on a PC. Sorry, people. <laughs> so it does there. only pertain, I think, to situations where safety is at issue. And so it would be if the tree was obstructing lights. So for instance, you wouldn't be able to see. I don't know if that would affect then drivers. Um, and then also for if it would be considered a dangerous tree. This isn't downloading for me. Why not? And, you know, and, and also, while any of us are free to be as interested in, as, in that as we want as citizens, as commissioners, we do 44 policies. That's it's not in my lane. Yeah. I mean, I pay attention to plenty of things that happen in the village and weigh in on them in a capacity as, you know, Thomas Burke, private citizen. Now, I can get up at any meeting and, and say my name is Thomas Burton. I live at 1421 Raleigh Road and say my piece. Um, True. And I can do the same, but right. we're not sure if, the, uh, you know, if we're going to make comments or we're reviewing this for consistency. Um, that, that was my read. Yeah, but whether it's comments or consistency, it's when we act as commissioners, um, you know, our, our business is our business and what's outside our purview is outside our purview. You know, we don't, That's fine. Uh, I'll, bring comments, yeah. I'll bring my comments to the board of trustees as, as uh, Jane property owner. The other thing is, is replacement of mature trees. That's always been the subject that um, we've talked about and planning board has talked about where it's not possible. It's in three eighteen seven E is an Eagle where it's not possible to replace an existing tree in kind due to its size or maturity. There's a recommendation and a chart of replacements. I mean, it's, it's great, but, um, you know, it's damage shouldn't occur to a mature tree that's preserved on a property. So, um, you know, that might be able to be, uh, strongly, more strongly dealt with. Then, I think that's a great comment. Then if damage so happens in the field, you know, and they, I'll, I'll use the expression, someone backs a backhoe into the tree by accident, you know, um, then they get to cut it down and replace it with smaller trees of smaller um, breast, you know, whatever, diameter breast height, you know, several other trees because, Mature trees are canopy for um, wildlife. If a tree is dead, it's dead. But if it's viable, and then the development, which we often come and play with best management practices and wetlands, if the development, the development needs to suit the terrain. So if you have the canopy of a tree and a person is dead set about expanding their structure, mature trees should not be, should be considered and it should be, the application should be modified in some respect. Everybody doesn't have to be able to build everything within the building envelope. You know, as far as you can to the corners of the building envelope. All right. We'll take down. take a look at the take a look at the at the provisions for mature trees and and propose a comment. I think you know Seamus said he likes your comment, and I and I do too. And I, and I can I can I have some thoughts that I'll send you on that. Thanks for bringing that up, Dorian. I think that's a good point. All right. Yeah, preserving canopy trees is one of the most Im most important intersections between uh, this law and our purview. So we ought, we ought to make sure that we are happy with the language. That is exactly why we're reading it. So you want comment? Where are comments going to on this? To Thomas or uh, Mr. Long, or how about both? Uh, yeah, copy us both because we don't uh, we don't create a quorum by having William and, and I both on it. Uh, copy us both. One of us will centralize, and then we'll do a little drafting, and and then we'll kick it out. In uh, in a form for everybody to review, see if they're happy with it, and those will be the uh, 
and the letter when everybody's happy with it will be the the view of the commission and question two amber's on board now i just you know um should amber be included or not well, we don't have we don't have to include the world. I'll, William can loop okay. her in because she's she's within the office. Um, okay, you know, she'll see it obviously. Right. I, I I my my proclivity is not to you know not to make every distribution list include everybody because we all get too many emails all the time. <laughs> yes. Which I just noticed we received two five o'clock that I didn't see. Okay, so tree ordinance, we've got a path forward. Uh, everybody's gonna kick comments to William and I, and uh, we will, uh, and a letter will come back that hopefully incorporates every everybody's uh, as they would like to see it done. And uh, if there are further comments after the, after the draft gets sent around, we'll uh, take those into account. And then we'll have a letter that expresses the view of the commission as a whole on the tree ordinance, we're good. Um, wetlands the uh the wetlands ordinance when we last looked at this there were there were two things that we were trying to get done we that were we've looked at this several times there were there were two things that we wanted to do one was to harmonize the notice provisions with what we do with notice for other laws because this was essentially part, portions of this were pulled from uh, neighboring communities codes and the notice provisions did not sync up. That's since been done and it now provides for the, uh, the notice to come from the staff to the applicant and the applicant is responsible uh, for disseminating notice and for paying the cost of it. The other thing was to harmonize it with the tree law uh, because originally we, had, we, we hadn't previously had a good set of definitions for things like clear cutting. So we included those within within the wetlands law and then the tree law was proposed. The tree law took care of all of that. Now the this version of the wetlands law is down to um, a minimal set of, is down to minimal definitions of tree cutting because it, uh, it's it been harmonized. Uh, I looked at that, I was happy with it. Uh, where are folks on this? Has everybody, um, has everybody had a chance to review it and do we know what we wanna do with it? Christy sent an email this afternoon that I couldn't read at five o'clock. Is that what's on the agenda? No. It's, okay. a, it's an incremental red line, right, Christy? Yeah, so essentially uh, what's on the agenda, I think is the final proposed version. What I sent around was the version that shows the difference between our current wetlands law and then what the final says. Um, and I apologize, I, I know I sent it last minute. It took a very long time because I had to retype most of it. Um, so I essentially, what I did is I put it in the format that the Board of Trustees usually likes to see. Um, and so um, what you have on your agenda, again, is the, the proposed clean version and I sent the red line. The red line should be added to the agenda, William, when you have a minute, um, if we're gonna be discussing it tonight. So Doreen, I don't know what's the best way to send it over to you. I sent it as a Word doc. Um, it doesn't make a difference because I can't open what's on the agenda for some reason on this computer. Are the both? So I can't, sorry, I both can't compare both them both. I'm clicking on the link, but it's not opening for some reason. But um, you did send it by email, correct? I did. At five o'clock. I just haven't had the chance to look at it. Yeah, I sent it around four. I don't right. think, let me put it this way. It's not gonna make a huge difference, I think, in your review. It's really just showing the changes to the Board of Trustees that have been made. And I thought it might be helpful to you as a commission to see that as well. I don't, it's not, it doesn't, it's not changing the substance. It's not changing um, what you've done so far. It's really just showing the, the changes that have been made. I have a, well, you want us to raise some questions? Could you send an email on it or just say it or, I mean, I haven't. Uh, if, you, if you know what you want to say, it might make sense to just say it now, but uh, I think we're, what we're probably going to end up with is if you've got anything else, um, 
Yeah. I, I have my notes at the office, but I had one comment here. I looked at like where it defines, they added a definition of CEQA. I, I, I don't understand when you define something, it gets very complicated because here you're defining it. It says article eight of the New York State Environmental Conservation Law. And that should be the definition, not that it provides for X, Y, and Z, which this goes on to do. Because if they change that article, then you're left with a misalignment there. In other words, this equal means the article eight of the you know New York environmental. I don't was this providing for environmental quality review of actions that may have a significant right. adverse effect on the environment. But I mean, what if they change? I mean, I don't know. Right, you're Could defining theory it. make it wrong. Mm -hmm. I got you. Yeah, I mean, it should be just boom. That's what it is. State of CEQA refers to Article 8 of the Environmental Council. Boom, that's what it is. You don't need to go into the substance. You're now, you're now restating it, and then if the one gets changed, who knows what happens, right? That's all. Oh, and the other thing that I'm noticing, just at first glance. Oh, please download. Better to look on my iPad because it's not downloading for me. All right, hang on a second. Um. I know Article 24 of the Environmental Conservation Law was taken out. I had just seen that when I saw the email before the meeting. Um, our wetlands law has to be in compliance with both Article 25 and 24 of Environmental Conservation Law. Irene, which should it, are you talking about the one that I sent around or are you talking about the version that's on the agenda, the final version? The one sent around. I, it could perhaps I missed something, so I'll search it now. That was stricken. Okay, well, I'll have to look. It's possible that I made an error. So, so well, the me... problem we've been having with, with, um, our wetlands law is we do also encompass tidal wetlands from the border of where the DEC's wetlands ends to the adjacent area. Bill Sharp's memo was very clear on that. Um, that was for the LWRP update. So both environmental conservation laws, we have to be not within their jurisdiction, so to speak, but in alignment. If you look at, sec if you have mine in front of you, section 17 um, okay, says no decision or order of the commission, um, blah, blah, um, must be in accordance with title 11 of article 24 of the state environmental conservation law. Yeah, didn't you strike that out? That's no, stricken out. But, so this is, this is why I sent this over because 192-17, I'm looking at the clean. Okay. 192.17. So you, your 192.17 is different because when whoever had edited that didn't line the sections up properly, which is part of the reason I sent this through. All right, but I'm talking about the legislative yes. intent. So 192. So 192, review and appeal. No, 192.1. If we remove if we remove that language, then it's not consistent with our LWRP. Because all that language was came from our original wetlands law to implement our LWRP in 1986. It's hard for me, Doreen, to understand what you're asking on the fly. So give me one second because we're working with two different versions. So it's what you sent today. And I only got as far as section 192.1 in the legislative intent. Okay, so give me one second while I go up to the top. So that, okay, so go, so go to page three at the top. So 192-1C. Therefore, the Board of Trustees of the Village of Ameranek, pursuant to Article 24 of the Environmental Conservation Law of the State of New York, declares that it is the intent of this chapter to promote X, Y, Z. So all I, all that I did was memorialize the changes that had been made. I see it now. I see it. 
But we also have to include Article 25. Let's see if it's in here. So it's that, not in the that was stricken by whoever drafted the clean version of the law. It was stricken um, from the wetlands definition. It was previously in the wetlands definition. The reason why I bring this up is because Bill Sharp, in his memo to the Board of Trustees who forwarded to us, talked about in our LWRP, I won't even call it a draft because that was our product that we provided to the Board of Trustees, um, talked about that the village regulatory jurisdiction is also within tidal wetlands, not just freshwater. And I think if I could remember correctly, Article 24, or could have it switched, Article 24 might be freshwater wetlands, Article 25 is tidal. We, if you look at, if you look at the Article 25, I think it is, I can't remember, of tidal wetlands, there's a, there's a permit program that the um, DEC follows but we're talking about adjacent areas, at our jurisdiction, from that boundary towards our jurisdiction. That's what's being left out. So looking at the environmental conservation laws on both is important. We do not regulate Freshwater wetlands in McGid Pond, that is the DEC's responsibility. Um, but all other freshwater wetlands within the village, we do. On titles, there's nothing in our code that addresses that. And that's something that Bill Sharp brought up in his memo. And we haven't dealt with it. So, Chair, can oh, I ask? Wait, go, uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, ask your question. So I just want to understand because normally what's been going on here is there's been small working groups and that's how these edits have been made. I think Greg Cutler was made some of the edits in the beginning. Um, I have not looked at this in terms as, as an attorney yet because we agreed that would be done at the Board of Trustees stage. So to memorialize Doreen's edits at this point, is the commission going to handle that? Is that something that you want us to do? Do you want planning? All right, I, this is I'm going to draft, draft, but it might come with um, an attachment of Bill Sharp's memo so that we could finally get some something done properly, you know, and cover what he was asking for it to be done. Uh, Doreen, do you ha uh, Commissioner Rooney, do you have a copy of uh, Mr. Sharp's uh, uh, email or letter? It's on a previous agenda. Let me tell you which one. Let me look at Novus. It's under the LWRP update on previous agendas if you've carried it forward. Um, it's on this agenda, right? Yeah. No, it didn't carry forward. I'm not seeing links on amending the local waterfront revitalization program at all on Nova's agenda. That's because that would that would that's because I don't ha I didn't have them. Um if you want to talk if you can if uh, you're around tomorrow we can discuss and I can make sure everything is up to date. Well I could just pull it off a prior agenda. All right. I mean, I think the definition the definition here is meant to be both scientific and broad enough to encompass both tidal both freshwater and tidal wetlands. You see what's stricken and I, I don't have yeah, the page I see though. what's I see what's stricken. Um under wetlands, A lands and waters of the state that meet the definition provided in uh, subdivision one. Right. Of the State Title Wetlands Act, it was stricken. Okay, here's what I'm asking you. Is there anything within the stricken portion that would not also be within the definitions of A or B in the in, in this version?
Oh, geez. Hang on a second. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, C and D expand it beyond that. I mean, it's meant to be A, B, C, and D there are meant to be extremely broad. So I don't think the stricken portion is, is a legal definition that's being replaced by an extremely broad practical definition of wetlands. It's meant to encompass all of it. There shouldn't be anything that's a wetland that's not covered by this law as written. That's been, you know, that's been eliminated by striking old A. New A, B, C, and D should cover, should cover more than was covered by A. It does, however, with um, Article 25 of Title Wetlands, there are three ways. Do I have to get really technical? There are three ways to go. Either the DEC regulates all tidal wetlands in our village, which they don't because we have some say on it. Right. There's the county does it. And if the county defaults, then we do. And if we change this, we're allowing one of those two agencies, in my opinion, I'm not a lawyer, to have jurisdiction over their, the wetlands where we don't. If you read... Subdivision one of the State Title Wetlands Act, you'll have a better understanding what striking that means. What it says is lands and waters of the state that meet definition provided by twenty uh, by section twenty five oh one oh three subdivision one of the New York State Title Wetlands Act, Article twenty five of the Environmental Conservation Law. The approximate boundaries of such lands and waters are indicated in the official title wetlands inventory. Probably, yeah. It, so you're saying you think by striking that we're giving jurisdiction back to the county or the state? I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is you're saying that we, okay, we, which we can't, because you have to get in touch with the commissioner of the Department of Environmental Conservation to do this. It's a program where they, it's their jurisdiction. Okay, but we can take over certain jurisdiction as long as we are within their regulatory framework or a higher standard. So maybe it might be a good idea to have the DEC look at this eventually if the Board of Trustees wants to adopt it. I, I just, I'm not sure because I don't know the legal ramifications. To strike it out um, of our code that was there previously, could be problematic. Well, okay. Hang on. Let, let, me ask, let me ask you this. It. Let me, Doreen, let me, let me ask you this way. The way it's written, there are multiple criteria for a wetland. If, if we simply added back old A, which is a code-based definition of a wetland, in a Not a problem. Yeah. Lost you. You're frozen, Tom. No, I'm no, I'm not frozen. <laughs> that was, that was me just staring at the text um, yeah, because I <laughs> because I think the fig because as as I read it, A, B, C, and D together would encompass anything that's within old A. So we probably don't include anything we don't want to include if we, if we reincorporate all day so that the definition is now A and then A, B, C, and D become B, C, D, and E. What about her point about Article 25 and Article 24? Well, the, I, I thought what, first of all, the, 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 the larger point, this is supposed to encompass both uh, freshwater wetlands and tidal wetlands, although the title of the, I noticed the title of the, of the act doesn't say that, the text does. The text definitely includes tidal wetlands to the extent we jurisdictionally can, right? And that's, these four definitions clearly encompass that because um, there's no limitation to, to, to freshwater. In fact, if you look at see all other marsh areas with tidal or freshwater vegetation, it, it clearly does incorporate both tidal and freshwater, which is the thing this set out to do. That's basically the reason we're doing this, is because we right. need to cover both tidal and freshwater. Right, right. Um, so that point I'm not troubled by. Whether whether you have to say 25 is now why we're down here looking at all day. 
if we have to say, and we're including anything that's included in the definition of wetland under 25, all right, we can add back old A. So the definition now would be A, B, C, D, and E. I'm fine with that. I don't yeah, but would you need to do that or could you just put in uh, C, therefore the Board of Trustees of the Village of Mamaroneck pursuant to Article 25 and Article 20, Article 24 and Article 25 of the Environmental Conservation Law. Just put and Article 25, Article 24 and, and Article 25. <clears throat> yeah, uh, you could do that. C could be all other marsh areas uh, with title or freshwater vegetation, including without limitation, uh, everything defined as title wetlands within Article 25 of the Environmental Con Conservation Law. That's what you're suggesting? Just basically incorporate all day by saying including without limitation everything that's covered by Article 25 of the ECL? Correct. Yeah. It's yeah. Plain, that plain, plain and simple, right. That works. That works for me. Does anybody else have an issue with that? As long as we're including both and it makes sense, it's got to be, you know, as long as it's there, it's fine. Yeah. Well, that, that will certainly protect us if there is some, some is, if it's an absolute necessity to reference ECL 25, that would protect us. So C, C would be amended to, to, to say, including without limitation, uh, wetlands is defined in ECL uh, 25. You got that, Christy? All right, that's, that, that's a lot of noodling around for a fairly, for a fairly short and non-controversial edit. Um, okay, people have anything on other sections? I, I had one thing, Tom. Yeah. Uh, so th there was, um, I think it's the definition of re removal. Hold on a second. Yeah, definition of remove. So we strike, we struck out to dig, dredge, bulldoze, drag line, blah, 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 and it just says now to take out of the wetland. So should that say by any means to take out the out of the wetland by any means? <clears throat> Are you asking if that's what it should say, or is that what it said before? Uh, I'm asking if that's what oh, it should. Yes, if yes, that's yes, what, yes, if, yes, if, yes, if yes. we should add by any means after uh, at the end of that. Matter of style, right? I mean, uh, well, yeah. I mean, it was being very specific before, and it seems like we've gotten, you know, super generic. <laughs> we've gone from super specific to super generic, and it doesn't. Right. Mean, that's. That yeah. that's deliberate. Right? <laughs> yeah, I, I get I get that. So that's why that that was the only other thing that sort of stood out to me that you know. But I'm, I'm not sure I would say. I mean, I'd have to look at how remove is used otherwise or used throughout the law, but I'm not sure that I would say by any means necessary because that could open you up to mean that I, I think it would be too broad because it could open up you to means that maybe are are not the most environmentally sound I would do you see what I'm saying like I'm afraid that that would then give leeway I, I don't know well just, no because the the way the way re, the reason this is being done is because remove in here is not is is not used permissively I, I right, think if right, you right exactly that, that, I mean I, I hadn't been I hadn't been anticipating this question but it, my recollection is remove is not used per i see what you're saying christy if remove is used permissively and then you and then you say by any means you're giving permission to use any means to do it that you'd need to do it it's not used permissively okay so that's what i was saying is i wasn't sure how it was used throughout the law but if it is in that way then we, yeah we should review before we should review for that one more time before we vote it but i think what 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 martin and i are both thinking is i think it's used prescriptively thou shalt not remove under the following circumstances mm -hmm. and so you know that's the reason we're going from specific means which give people the opportunity to remove by some other way or uh, to, to, you know, take out of the wetland, which means if you're not allowed to remove it, you're not allowed to remove it. I don't care if you have a drone, pull it out. You're not allowed to do it. Right. That. Yeah. That's my point is that, is that, you know, right. Yeah. They're good. So it gives them no way to find a way around it. If you say by any means, that means you can't do it by any way mm -hmm. that you think you might be able to do it by. 
fuck. <laughs> yeah, I, I, sometimes you got to make explicit what's what's implicit. I, I, I think by any means is implicit and to take out of the wetland. If you can't do it, you can't do it by any means. Right. But sometimes you're right. It's better to be explicit. <laughs> There's no way around this. Right, right. That's, uh, it, it seems like it, it's a created loophole. So, I, you know, I was just trying to fill that hole. Yep. Yeah, I have no problem with by any means. Um, I'm going to take one more look at it for uh, to to make sure that we both remember correctly that remove is used proscriptively here, so that that only does what we mean it to do. Um, unless somebody's got an issue with it, I I actually like that. Edit. We can do that. Um, other comments. Um. Uh, Thomas, I have one a uh, little bit of an offbeat uh, idea. Uh, since there's a new harbor master in Mamaronic, should we reach out to him and try to get him to participate in the meeting? Maybe he can give us a little uh, background on um, new happenings in uh, the east and west uh, basin. He's the ex officio, right? Yeah, harbor master, right? Harbor master always has an ex officio role in the uh, yep. in the committee. It'd be good since he's new. It'd be good to meet him. Let's put that on the agenda if he's able to attend. We can't we can't do that. But well, that's an odd. We can't direct staff to attend. But since the but since the harbor master is an ex officio uh, commissioner, then we we can we can ask and invite. That's all. all right. that's what I'm saying. You know, he doesn't come. It'd be a nice gesture, I think, just to foster. If you can't make it, you can't make it. But yeah, yeah. Thank, thanks for raising that. Let's uh, make sure somebody does that. Reach out. Uh, yeah, okay. Staff, so staff will do that tomorrow. We'll reach out tomorrow. Thank you, William. So if anyone has anything else on the wetlands law, uh, we've we've now had several chances to really look at that. We're we're down to. Um, you know, we're, we're down to some very careful looks at some very specific things. We may have two edits coming into Wednesday wow. night. I'd like to be able to vote this Wednesday. We've kicked it around a lot. I, I would like to be able to, uh, you know, before we, uh, before we have a new federal election, I'd like to both have our hands off the tree law and have our hands off the wetlands law. Uh, at least. Here, here. So, all right. I, I need a, I need a, a three minute comfort break. So let's take five. Thanks.
All right. I think we've uh, we've got all the video faces showing. All right. The next agenda item up is our LWRP, which is, of course, the most significant uh, non-applicant item we're going to undertake pretty much now or ever. Um, so it's that we've, we've taken our time with. Uh, William asked uh, me to sort of uh, make sure that he had a chance to get get his own, you know, himself and, and his team up to speed on this because it's a big deal and the and the and you know planning department's going to want to uh, be aware of you know what it is we're doing to our LWRP before we change it because we're going to have to live with it for a very long time. Um, so we've we've worked we've workshopped this through through various groups a few times, but I, I just want to uh, I want to ask William to weigh in or Amber if you've got comments now um, about process going forward and how we get from this to um, you know a, a submission back to the state. If you don't mind, can we? Um... Staff still needs a little time to deal with this, especially with Amber being new. Uh, can we, can staff get back to you at your next work session? Absolutely. I just, in terms of where we are on it, uh, as Doreen pointed out before, this has already gone to the state once for comment and we got, and we got back a bunch of, uh, and we got a bunch of comments back from the state. Um, and this is sort of our, our last roll through it, and then hopefully we, um, you know, hopefully we'll be able to vote it at some point with whatever further changes we need to make, and then it'll become our LWRP. We would like that obviously to address any issues that we feel have been um, not clarified, not complete, or don't fit the way we want our our village waterfront to operate uh, anymore. Uh, so that we've taken into account all the lessons learned and all the changes in the world since the early 80s. Um, yeah, to get a look at it, see what you think of it. Um, it encompasses, you know, for and Amber, I know you're fairly new to LWRP. The the policies encompass a lot of stuff. Every from everything from the economic uh, use of the waterfront to water dependent recreation and its role in the community, um, the aesthetic and historical, and of course the things that we talk about the most, uh, which are environmental. The, uh, the watershed issues that come from having 32 square miles of, the, of Westchester County drain right into the Merrimack River and into our harbor, and that come from having a, 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 a sense of environment um, shoreline habitat for all kinds of stuff, uh, freshwater, brackish, and saltwater, and um, and from having extensive floodplains that can uh, that can create both opportunities and dangers for humans and animals alike. There's one other. So thing. it covers a lot of stuff. There's one what, other. What thing. did I forget, Dory? What did public I forget? Ac public access. Mm -hmm. Public well, access. I said water dependent use. No, public sort access. Of ac yeah. um, not really, because the general public of yeah. the state of New York needs access to the water. Yeah, you got a point there, too. That's a separate policy set of policy considerations public access to the water, water dependent recreation, economic use. Uh, you know, aesthetic and historical, uh, flood, environmental. That's all in the mix. So there's a lot of stuff. Um, I'm happy to hear that Amber's. It, I'm happy to hear Amber's with us because um, our historical preservation is very important, and she seems to have some experience with that. Uh, yes, I, I'm very excited to be involved in all the whole broad scope of what the reach is here. Um, it's a lot of very. Uh, nuanced planning related activities going on, it sounds like. Um, I've been hearing a lot as well with uh, sort of beach beach clubs and and uh, access, waterfront access, so very interesting. Thomas, I'm yeah. gonna be leaving the group uh, after the next meeting. I can't come back. 
And uh, a while, a very while ago, um, I put out, since I worked with the working groups, uh, the reason why I got appointed, appointed, I think, on this commission is because I created such a stir with um, several consultants working with our LWRP update uh, that uh, I have a lot of information and I sent I don't know who was on the board at the time, but since I have the history, I put forth a memo to Tony Gelber when he was chair a while back um, outlining what needs to be accomplished going forward. What are missing from the document, just to say this, that um, the working groups put out are the maps, which are the most important part of the LWRP. But I have a memo that I, if I could find, I could recirculate if you'd like me to do that about what's missing and what needs to be done. Staff, yeah, yeah, that would be useful. All right. Because I don't Thank remember you. who was yeah. on the board and who isn't, you know, who was there when. Yeah, I think I remember that, Doreen, from when I first started. So my guess is you're going to find it like November or December of 2019. Um, I think it probably would be helpful to send back around. Um, and I was going to ask just to be a little more clear on what the plan is on on this, because I understand we got some new folks with William and Amber, and probably you're just going to take a look and familiarize yourself with this. But I know that there are... Um, open items that it's not just reviewing a red line and saying, you know, these, these changes are good. I know there are open items that I, I, I think, and I don't know, Tom, what you're thinking, but I think that at some point we'll have to create groups of people who can go try to um, track those open items down, um, you know, inventory stuff, maps, um, open points in the, in the red line. Um, so, you know, uh, maybe at the next work session, if that's where we're going to pick it up, I think we should just try to pick it up in earnest. I mean, I, from my view, this is one that I think we all probably want to see some significant um, movement on. And I think now that we have this working session combination with our applicant nights, if that's how the breakdown ends up working, um, hopefully we can do so. And I'm happy to, you know, help uh, Tom. So if you know, need a little groups to do things um Thank be you. happy to volunteer so me too yeah we, good have, news. yeah we have several either map or inventory items that we're going to have to complete here's the good news Go ahead. the inventory Go ahead, inf that we were missing is now available on gis so at least the time that went by you now we could now pull that information off of gis the other thing that's really key here in getting a document that can be approved or adding to our current LWRP is what which I suggested as an update because many communities take their original LWRP and in their amend it in their amendments put the additional information but the key thing here is is who will this board work with at the Department of State to make sure that what we're doing isn't off the beaten path because that's what was missing on our update from day one, working with the Department of State to make sure that we do what's required for the LWRP. Well, I can, staff, staff can definitely do that. Uh, when, I used to, when I worked in Mount Vernon, Mount Vernon, we had an LWRP. And uh, because of that, I worked very closely with uh, with Jamie Ethia. So uh, right. I'm familiar with him, and I know exactly. You know, I have his direct information, and um, you know, staff will staff will will uh, accommodate that. So do I, but but I think it might have to come from the Secretary of State and possibly getting another grant. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Well, grants take a long time. I, I, I had hoped that we had a, a shorter timeline than that. There are definitely well, inventory items we got to track down, but. I hope. I hope it's it's that easy, but we'll see. 
All right. Well, then, you know, that's then that's a question. Is there is there is there any outstanding item that would require where the state would require something that we're not capable of doing with the resources we have at hand? That's a so William, that's a that that question's really going to be yours in the first instance. Is there anything that that we that that we need to fill in here that we are not able to do with the resources we have that the state will require us to do something that that we could, we just can't do? Well, because we were supposed we would have to look for external funding. The whole the whole reason for this amendment was to add a uh, a watershed water quality improvement plan within our LWRP. That was the only reason why we needed to amend it. <clears throat> so it was suggested because I participated in conversations with our former village manager in the Department of State as well as others on the Harbor Coastal Zone, former chairs, it was recommended that we get a separate grant to do that aside from amending our LWRP. But it still needs to be done. We haven't really gone forward with that. It could be in the, um, I can't remember if Section 4 or 5 is future projects. You, you know, you can put it in the section of future projects, and that's the way it was recommended. There's also the LWRP guidebook on a former agenda, and I'm still looking for it, but I can't find a former Harbor Coastal Zone agenda on Novus. I don't know why. <clears throat> okay. Okay. All right. So that's probably all we can do with that one tonight. Um, our, but that'll be on for our next work session. And we, I think we all really want to see that one move forward. We've got. Um, oh, I know why now. Our next item. Our next item is this changed fee. Is this new fee proposal? Um, we've been asked to comment on that. Does any the people already know what they think? Um, well. I could use a little background. Sorry, Doreen, because I, 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 I've read it, but I, I just don't know if I missed something or if someone has a little background on where this is coming from. I mean, I know where it's coming from, but like what the, um, what if there's any context to this? Yeah, me too. I'd have to jog my memory, but as far as I know, it was an item that was brought up um by mayor murphy and it was essentially to further promote affordable housing um and um essentially it removes the the recreation fees i, I know it's not, <laughs> it's not very helpful but <laughs> Is that is it an upfront fee paid at the time of development of a property, or is it an ongoing fee? Um, you know, I'm uh, supportive of things that make affordable housing um, easier to achieve here, but I just don't. You know, I, trying to understand whether coming at this parkland fee is appropriate or not, I just don't know enough about the background uh, of that personally. I didn't personally work on this one. I can Bob was spearheading it. Um, I can take a look quickly to see if we have any memorandums or background that might be helpful. Well, has it is this calendared for the Board of Trustees meeting in the future? Um, and it have is. they the public hearing is set to be open next week? So have they um, circulated their intent for lead agency and uh, done seeker? Probably not. Uh, I would have been likely a type two. In fact, I think it was a type two. They circulate their intent for lead agency. No, they wouldn't because it's a type two action. Mm. Well, parks are open space and well, dedicated parkland, uh, recreation areas and so on and so forth throughout the village. Um, open space is part of the LWRP, especially near water areas. Um, and we have a lot of them. Um, but this is talking about the fees. Yeah, that's the parkland. 
But I I construe this to mean um, instead of providing open space within the development for the people that live there, you could monetize that by paying a fee. Um, this is with any development. Instead of providing the open space, and uh, Lord knows it, it comes into play with our watershed and our water quality um, of not having more open space, but uh, I know it's fee-related, so I'm kind of on the fence with how to approach this. It was typed as a type two by the board. I mean, you're welcome to make a comment to them if you feel otherwise. Or I suppose the commission's welcome to make a comment if they feel otherwise. Yeah, for me, I guess I just don't understand how this accomplishes what the goal, what what the goal is, and how it accomplishes it. That's what that's my that's where I'm not drawing the thread between the two. Yeah, it almost seems like. Um, and uh, I, I guess, well, it seems like a it, sometimes these type of legal documents sort of have like a this is why we're doing this, but this doesn't seem to, you know, like whereas the village wants to blah blah blah. Um, I, I I think I could benefit from just a couple sentences of this this is what we're trying to accomplish and this is why we're doing it. Um, I, I just what I just am I'm a little bit lost on it. Right, and this is how that this is how this does that. This right. is how this, you know, it's the what, the where, and the why, and the how are missing from this document. Yeah. <laughs> but who's, geez, the time, the timing's tight because if, you know, my, my first instinct is to say, well, who's the proper person to come in and, and explain it to us? If we're supposed to comment on it, we want to understand it. And it, this is, I mean, we're, we're a bunch of fairly smart and sophisticated people, and we're all sort of struggling with understanding how this is actually going to operate. Um, who's the right person to explain it. But if it's coming up at the October, you know, if it's coming up at October 26, that doesn't really give us time to do that. So if I may, it looks to me like any time there would be site plan approval required for any, and again, stop me if, if this is all very readily apparent, but if a site plan approval is required for a development, et cetera, based on the number of affordable houses that they're providing, that affects how much you have to pay for this recreation fee. So if you're you're providing 100% affordable housing, you don't have to pay anything into this recreation fee, right? Because so it's a it's essentially promoting building affordable housing, you don't have to pay that fee. I don't know how often they have to pay the fee. Um, it looks like to me that it would be um, let's see, it's it's a payment shall be a condition of site plan approval. So it would be at the site site plan stage. So it would be a one-time fee. Yeah. yeah. That, so is, is is does this just change does this just change the number? Is is, is the change that it the existing does the existing law allow um, payment in lieu of the parkland contribution and this just lowers the amount paid depending on the affordable housing contribution. Say that again about payment in lieu of the parkland fund. I mean, this this doesn't allow anybody to get out of um, out of making provisions for parkland that can't do that now, right? It just changes the amount they have to pay. Well, hold on, let me see. That's see, that's it, what I didn't understand. Like to me, yeah. See, I, I think this potentially makes yeah. affordable housing more profitable to the developer, which is a good thing because that they'll be more likely to do it. But I think, but at the expense, I think of funding per, perhaps, uh, you know, parkland fund of the village, um, which kind of, sort of counteracts dense housing uh, that we have. So I, I would, love to have someone make the case for this because i don't know if i have all the facts um i I'd, I'd just like to understand if if that is it or if there's more to the calculus of why this has been recommended i think well, parkland in space too so um you can with the way i see it you can pay a fee and not provide that open space for the residents of the development 
And then, and then the question is whether that's even the right incentives for the type of affordable housing we want to have. But, uh, but I don't know if that's true because I, I don't think there's a lot of <laughs> extra land in the village of Mamaroneck. I, I was thinking this was more of a fund that helped support the green space that we currently have, the developers no. pay. So, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but the idea behind all of this was how often are we getting development in the village that's 100% affordable housing? right? We're not, that's almost never coming up. So the idea is to give an incentive to developers to develop almost 100% affordable housing, because then they don't have to pay this fee. What I don't know is how hefty those fees are, but that's the idea is essentially to promote this extent 100% affordable housing. Yeah, or what other fees they still pay that aren't haircut at all. Um, because, you know, I think we're supposed to be stewards of the environment here. If they pay a bunch of fees and the one we're haircutting is the support of our green spaces, perhaps they should all be haircut pro rata instead of one. Um, I, I, I'm open to learning more about this, but just from what we've been given, I'm, I'm, and I'm, and I'm also not clear. Uh, are we commenting, you know, are we doing consistency? What, what are we doing with this? This is just commenting. Okay. Seamus, you just made an excellent point. Uh, the, about the about the different other different fees and that yeah if this is just strictly pulling from the environmental fee like yeah, agree 100 percent great point so maybe so, uh, that in the first instance though this is really a staff question like what what is it what is it a, a, an affordable housing development would have to pay across the board and is this is this really the fee that holds up potentially um, entirely affordable housing, or are there a bunch of other stuff that we're leaving in place while cutting only the parkland fee? Um, I don't know the answer to that, but I I figure, especially since we're on limited time commenting on this, I figure William, your team can answer that quicker than anybody else for us. Well, I have a oh. question on. On the seeker, because if this is really going to affect the environment, I'm not understanding how it's a type two action. Well, the thing is, it's the, the the effect on the environment is attenuated. If if we were if 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 the law now was there's no way out of providing actual parkland, uh, but we were but we were substituting a fee for that, that would have a big effect on open space. But if, if the law now, and I understand it is, is that you can pay a fee in lieu of uh, banking land for parkland use. And the only thing this is changing is how much and all we're really doing with it is lowering it for certain kinds of preferred development. That doesn't have a big effect because everybody was getting out of the requirement to actually seed land anyway. We're just tinkering with how much they have to pay for that right. Well, that's a, that's a big policy issue for me because if you redevelop a site and there's an opportunity to provide some green space in our heavily impervious surface areas, especially in the floodplain, um, which should be more open space because things can be built. You know, you don't have to build from property line to property line. I know our codes allow it, but point being is if some green space, even if it's a green roof, so to speak, where um, people can be, then, uh, you know, because our parklands are very, very crowded as they are now. You know, there can be open space made depending on a redevelopment scenario and where it is. Well, I think that's the point that Seamus was making is that, you know, if, if right. this, and, and what Tom is making too is that if this, if this particular fee is this the one that's actually getting in the way of this affordable housing? And if there isn't another fee that doesn't affect this open space and issue exactly as you're describing it, Doreen, that would be more applicable and, and be more influential on and create a, create a more realistic result to what the mayor is looking for. <clears throat> so, in terms of process, if planning staff is able to respond to your questions by Wednesday, um, in terms of what fees are paid, et cetera, then at that point, I, I guess we could address it again at Wednesday and then the comments could go to the board. 
for next Monday. The question. Yeah, at, right. Well, at, at worst, we'll have a have a discussion, and I'll be able to take enough information from it to draft a uh, draft a quick letter back that everybody can look at. Hopefully, I agree with that. At, at a minimum, we can say you know even we 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 are somewhat at a loss about this and here are the type of questions we have right even even that if it's just comments might be informative yeah at worst we can at least sort of recap the discussion we've just had about what what our concern is yeah i agree staff will do what's have, best have we to, gotten, uh, have we gotten confirmation back. from uh, uh village planner that this can actually happen by wednesday planning staff will do its best to get back to you Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate, Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Which brings us to the change to the proposed setback law. And I confess this is the one I've I've really haven't spent any time with. I also confess. <laughs> yeah, this is the one I spent. Well, well I can say this. It's in direct conflict with our LWRP. Because if you look at what's being stricken, uh, their strike, what's being proposed is, is striking the fact that only water dependent uses can be cited in, in, in the waterfront areas. And this law to me opens up Tidal and wetland, tidal and uh, freshwater wetland water bodies to future development, which impinges upon wetland um, uh, capacity, let me say, as well as flood control. So in, addition, not- in addition, Bill Sharp's memo of years back because they're proposing that the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, look at variances. I'm trying to look up as we have this meeting to find that memo. Bill Sharp's memo of several years back when we changed our, our Chapter 240, and I think in 2016 or 14, I can't remember, um, a provision for the Zoning Board's um, actions related to consistency needed to be made, and we still haven't done that. In other words, before the Zoning Board um, actually allows uh, what they want to allow, uh, even if it's a variance, it needs to be evaluated for consistency. That's not in our code right now. Also, that brings up a point that this is uh, this is not just for your comments. This one will require consistency. It's an unlisted action. So I think right. that there's um, I, I I think there's background on this that I'd like to find. Uh, but someone or someone tell me if they know that or think that I'm wrong on this. Um, I believe this is similar to our recommendation uh, from that we gave. Uh, maybe early in the year. I'm, I'm trying to remember. And I think that this was Greg Cutler's um, argument that he made that to, in order to fix some inconsistencies, you know, setting a universal 50 foot buffer uh, was good. And then, the, and then the debate was whether you then get a special permit or a variance. And if so, which board you have to come to. So I, I, I think I'd like to find what this commission provided um, because I, I believe some of this, um, you know, having this 50 foot um, setback uh, is consistent with what we recommended, but I think the special permit versus variance and which, and the ZBA versus, you know, potentially our board for certain things may be different. Um, do, does anyone know, does anyone remember that memo that we may have sent? I think it'd be helpful to, to, to know what we suggested and where this varies from it. We really, we yeah. really need to know what we previously commented on. You're right, Seamus. But uh, I don't, I, I, you know, I haven't seen the memo uh, that you had pre- from previous, from previously. However, um, I guess that was one of the questions, you know, as I was reviewing this, that I had is whether or not the zoning board is the appropriate body to issue 
um, a deviation. And uh, the reason I say that is because the zoning board typically deals with use variances, uh, area variances, and they also deal with special use permits. Um, this, to me, when I was reading it, the code right now says that the planning board is the board that issues the waiver. The question is, is this a waiver or is this a special use permit? And if it's a waiver, then arguably the zoning board is not the board to deal with this. So that would be the question that I would have. And, and maybe if it's a waiver, is it is it the planning board or is it the Harbor Coastal Commission? Because well, I really want to, thanks, William. I, I agree. Because I, what I want to do is remind myself of where we came out before I say something in conflict to it. So only provisionally until making sure my memory is correct. I, I think that I think that it's a great idea to have this standard 50 foot setback. But when you're talking about 50 feet setback off of, you know, the sound and rivers and so on, I think that probably this commission is best situated to deal with the variance. But um, I, I just want to remember what we said last time. So, uh, well, I have, I have a suggestion because this is under our purview, circulation of notice of intent. This deals with wetlands also. So I don't know if the plan as the, sorry, the um, board of trustees circulated their intent for lead agency, um, typed it, did seeker. Um, while I'm thinking about this, uh, Department of State, since we're really changing a law that implements our LWRP, one of the policies, um, and wet and interferes with wetlands values if we're going to allow variances to encroach on wetlands. And primarily, we're changing a code that only allows water dependent uses to other allowable uses. So that really needs to be circulated to the Department of State and DEC, as well as the fact that we don't have a CAF, since we're commenting, we don't have a coastal assessment form and the necessary information. Those were from March and April, those were circulated. Pardon? For, from uh, March and April, the EAF was circulated on March 18, 2020, and the CAF and accompanying narrative was uh, dated April 8, 2020. But it's All not right. on our agenda. Yeah, we were we responded to that at some point. We we have Shamus remembers. We we commented on this early this year. So we've got to dig that up, see what we previously said. Also, if I can provide a little bit of historical background, what I do remember is that each board <laughs> said that they should be the board to handle it. Um, and so each board made that comment to the board of trustees and the board of trustees ultimately decided that it should be the planning board. I mean, you're obviously welcome to make the comment again, um, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to note that that has been addressed already. Yeah, it's but this, they said the zoning board. What did I mean? Yeah, you said planning and what, what yeah. you said makes sense. That because uh, planning uh, is, uh, yeah. right. Planning typically when typically for for coordinated secret reviews, it, it usually ends up with planning and planning thinks about some of the same things we do just through a different lens. And for that reason, we almost never get in a fight with planning over, for example, secret typing. Typically, they do it in a co coordinated review and we comment to them because you know, they they deal with the same issues that we deal with. It makes perfect sense to me that planning would be the agency that determines uh, whether there should be variance from a 50 foot uh, water setback. It doesn't make any sense to me that that would be zoning. It obviously doesn't make any sense to William either. Um, seems like a mistake. Um, just seems like a mistake. We sh we need to check our, somebody's got to dig up our prior commentary on this. It should, William, it should be under the prior agendas. Um, so it would likely be on agendas between January and March. Um, I don't think we save a copy of it in our files, but I think that would be the time period. But I'm pretty sure that we have a different version of this law, correct? What because do you they, circ they circulated something to us earlier in the year. This is a different version, correct? 
Yes, yes, this is this is the latest version. I think it was edited all the way up until May. So you are commenting and providing consistency on a new version. So where's the new EAF and the new CAF? That would be a question for the village planner, not for me. I don't know. Do they have to do a new, a new EAF and CAF every time they amend it? No, it would only be if there were like substantive changes that would possibly affect um, have any effect on the environment. <coughs> no, maybe. And I, I think mean, that previously, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Chair. Uh, I was just going to say, if, if if they made substantive edits to it, including probably changing which board uh, makes the determination, um, that arguably that's they they might need new EIF. Martin. Yeah, I think I, I think that, that just to your point, um, if you look at section six B, it basically gives the zoning board all the all the power. So it says the zoning board of appeals may grant a permit for the construction, alteration, enlargement, or enclosure of a building, structure, or parking area within the fifty foot buffer area if it determines that locating the building structure or parking area within the fifty foot buffer will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties. Two, the benefit sought by the applicant cannot reasonably be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than locating the structure within the 50 foot buffer area. Or three, and this is where it applies to us, locating the building structure or parking area within the 50 foot buffer area will not have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district but it doesn't really, it, doesn't take, talk all, it about takes all the teeth out of it. <clears throat> That's right. That's that, that the zoning board doesn't even have the lens they would need right. to review this through the lens that we need them to. Right. It, it basically takes all the teeth out com completely. Well, it doesn't well I feel, definitely it, think that, that should be a comment then. That definitely, I think, should be, uh, should be, a, should be your, uh, a major comment back to the board. To the board of trustees. Well, but we're not commenting on this. We're finding consistency on this one. This one is within our purview, and 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 they there there are circumstances when they can overrule us. There's a standard for that, but we can say we find it not consistent. Um, so, just out of curiosity, quick question: when when you have a situation like this where the board is asking you for consistency, is the board also asking you for a recommendation about the content? Is it both or is it just one or the other? As a as a practical matter, um, since we since since we get to vote on consistency, they they would be they they need to know why we think what we think because uh, they because even if they disagree with us, they then have a determination. And I can't quote you the standard off the top of my head. Uh, maybe Christy can, but they 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 then have a standard that they have to vote to to override consistency and and uh, and impose the law anyway. Actually, right. they need to come up with finding as as to how we were incorrect. Yeah, there's a standard. There's a difference. There's one standard for a for like a public infrastructure. Um, or, or building project, and there's a different, which is extremely strict, and there's a different standard for a law. And the standard for a law is a little more deferential, but basically it's an error standard. They have to find, I, I can't quote it, but they, they have to they have to make a finding of fact that we're wrong. Um, please, sorry to interrupt, but are you? Yeah, no, go ahead. You, If you know it better than I do, please tell oh, me. Oh, I actually, I, I more have a question about process for William. Um, do you know what day that this was referred to the Board of Trustees, ex excuse me, to the commission by the Board of Trustees? I believe it was September 16th. Okay, so technically we were supposed to have provided with um, a consistency determination it looks like within 30 days so if the board is not going to be prepared to comment on it uh next week i don't know if you're going to be able to quickly that quickly give consistency you would ask the board of trustees for an extension mm -hmm. and yeah that seems like we're gonna have to seems like oh, we we're gonna work have to as long as we can we can be provided with the EAF to CAF 
um, and all the background as to where this happens. You know, we can assume it's every waterway and water course in the village because it's, you know, within the 50-foot buffer. But um, I don't think what's been considered is is if there's total build-out based on this code, what will the village look like, but more importantly, what will happen to our waterways, tidal and fresh water? Because there aren't any environmental considerations here. It's just total build-out within the 50-foot buffer of waterways, which that buffer isn't even enough to provide um, a decrease in the nutrient load. Yeah. Even the language is right. The language focuses on the character of the neighborhood, but you know, it, right. it's a 50 foot setback from waterways that are, you know, active environments. And that even where they're completely built up, even where they've got concrete banks on both sides, the waterway flows immediately into our Harbor. Yeah. The, the next section of it goes into some of those environmental things, uh, section nine, I guess it is. And it talks about, um, you know, the 50 foot buffer area, in addition to other criteria and standards set forth in this section for any development within the 50 foot buffer area that's permitted by the zoning board of appeals, uh, pursuant to section 240-30, the site development plan must, and it goes through a bunch of things, require a landscape plan and you only use non, only use na uh, native plants demonstrate that the bank or coastline uh, is stable, require that any parking areas are permeable pavers, I'm paraphrasing here, satisfy the water quantity requirements of chapter 294. But the last one is incorporate any other requirements to minimize the environmental impact of the development in the 50 foot buffer area on the coastal shoreline water bodies and water courses. But that's all it says. David, it's it's not, it's probably not fair to put you on the spot, but you've spent as much time on zoning as as everybody else uh, on this commission put together. Oh yeah, that's true. Is, is is zoning in any way equipped to put that into practice in a meaningful way? Well, that that, was, my, that was the you. point. That was the point I was making. That's yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think they are. I mean, we this is definitely our area of expertise. So why why wouldn't it, it have to go by our commission? You know, I, I agree with you, but I want but I, I but I want to hear what David thinks. But I don't. I think what you'd have to look at, and I, and I haven't, and I haven't because I have all my files with me tonight. But I think um, you'd want to look at also village law and what what can be delegated to non zoning. I believe to the extent it's deemed a variance, it has to be either zoning or possibly planning board because that has the authority well right that's well, what we've been talking about whether this is properly proposed with planning not zoning what what i asked you yeah oh. does it come up in the con how would the context of it come up that's what i'm questioning would it come up in the sense of uh not a subdivision right no wouldn't be that well no, you it's going to come yep. up in the context it's going to come up in the context of somebody who wants a variance to uh, to a to to build a new building or expand a building uh, within the fifty foot buffer from a water course, right? That's how it's going to come up. Yeah, I would think it's more of a zoning issue. I know people don't feel that way here, but um, I think it is because you got to then have people with what happens if you have one? That's one. They want one setback change for that and something else with something else. Because it's very common when you're doing a project to get several variances. You apply for several because they're interrelated. David, uh, how, often on, how often in zoning, how often in zoning did you have environmental scientists come before you and give opinions? A few times a year. Because I mean, basically, we do it with almost every application. Yeah, we do it with one. I'm just no my my concern is that zoning doesn't. Yeah, no, I hear you. I think if there's a way to do it, the problem is if you have several variances. The trust, you know, if you're going to do it through, I don't know. It, it's a very. It, it depends if it's an isolated issue or if it comes up in others. I mean, zoning does get involved very frequently with impacts. I think with regard to the water issues. 
you're much better. There's no question. The commission's much better, much more attuned to it, much more related to it, adept at dealing with it. Um, and, plan well, well, plan and planning, I think, would be secondary if it comes up in a site. You see, the question I have is this. If it comes up just as an isolated variance, then I really think it's, I don't know, you're going to get planning involved with other variances as well with that? I don't know. I would, I, unfortunately, I don't have it with me tonight, but. Um, it should only be isolated. I mean, I, I can't. I can't imagine that what we're that what we're trying to get to here is, you know, wholesale neighborhood by neighborhood relief from the setback so that you can build to the lot line by the river, right? I can't imagine that that's anybody's intent. So the idea must be, and it reads to me as though it reads to me as though the idea is that we're going to have a uniform fifty foot setback from watercourses, but every once in a while we're going to see a property where we say. Uh, that really creates a hardship. And to me, the this is written like it's a neighborhood and zoning issue. And to me, you know, having the lens that I have from this commission, that's wrong. And primarily the issue is that it's too close to a water course. And that's primarily an environment and habitat and stormwater and water quality issue. And that somebody has to bring that lens to it. Whether Planning's okay with that stuff. So if it said planning could grant the variance, I'd be shrugging and going, seems all right to me. Um, but in terms of analyzing your hardships, whether it's, you know, area variance or use variance or what have you, that's really, zoning is very used to doing that. I mean, that's what they deal with. They're dealing with setbacks regularly. This one has, I mean, we deal with, I'm just trying to think of. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, don't I, see I, any, I don't see any hardships involved in this law. But but I wanted to point out another thing. Wouldn't this this whole thing would fall under a wetlands permit because it's close to a wetland, correct? So the applicant yeah. would have to go before the before the planning board, our board, and now the zoning board of appeals. We're trying to streamline the process and it was recommended to do the wetlands application and give us give our commission the authority to issue permits for wetlands. Now we're doing the opposite, it seems, with this law in involving another board to review it. And what's written in this law, I'm not seeing any allowance for or the criteria if you have a hardship. It's not a hardship, it's, it's just a blanket allowance. There's no hardship requirement? I'm, I didn't see it. Am I reading this thing wrong? Well, what's the nature of the discretion then? I mean, how do I'm, I'm not following, and I'm sorry because I don't have my copy. But what, what's the nature of the discretion for any for any development within the 50 foot buffer area that is permitted by the zoning board of appeals pursuant to 24030? The site development plan must. Oh, I'm reading the wrong. I'm reading the procedural mm -hmm. stuff. 24030 is in our code. We're we're 240. Why is something that yeah. um 240 th that deals with Harbor Coastal here, Zone? Here, here go to zone here it board is. It's deal. 240-30 actually deals with planning. It's a permit provided by planning currently. It's in right. It's in currently, section. I was in the wrong place. I'm sorry. Section, permit, unless it's water dependent. Unless it's a it's water section, dependent use. It's section 6B. The Zoning Board of Appeals may grant a permit for the construction, alteration, enlargement, or enclosure of a building structure or parking area within the 50-foot buffer area if it determines that, one, locating the building structure or parking area within the 50-foot buffer will not produce an undesirable change in character in the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties, two, the benefit sought by the applicant cannot reasonably be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than locating the structure within the 50 foot buffer area. And three, locating the building structure or parking area within the 50 foot buffer area will not have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district. That's what I read earlier, Tom. Hey. Yep. <clears throat> 
Yeah, I'm just I'm rereading it for. No, 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 for, it's fine. I, I'm uh, just David, just reminding. So anyway. Yeah, right, well, you asked the question. You asked the question about what is the um, uh, you know, what's what's creating the 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 deviation, and uh, what's creating the deviation, the hardship. That was the question you were asking. What's the hardship? And and the answer to that is, I think in most of these situations, I guess the question is, would it be a self-created hardship? Is someone coming to do something that's there that, that if they didn't do it, um, I'm trying to think of how to phrase it in such a way. Um, it's self-created because they're doing something that's sparking the need for the deviation. Yes, but and if they're doing it on purpose and it's sparking the need, then it's a self-created situation. And maybe if if the board of trustees wants to leave the variance situation or the deviation with the zoning board, maybe your recommendation is that the uh, before the zoning board acts, they must seek the planning board and Harbor Coastal recommendation. Well, it's no. just another option. First of all, if it's self-created, this would be an area variance, correct? It's not a use variance. It would be. A, it would be an area variance. That's it's an correct. area variance. So the fact mm -hmm. that it's self-created doesn't not. Right. So it's not. It doesn't. The fact that it's it's self-created is a factor to be considered, but it does not, in and of itself, preclude it as as a use variance would. It's not a variance. Well, it's not a variance. It's a permit. What? It's a permit. All right. So it's we can permit. Keep but they purposely made it not a variance it's a permit it's a special use permit it would be a special use permit right yes it's a, it's it's essentially a special use permit but it's, What's so it's the standard for getting the special use? just what they you just read correct but for to be a special use permit it can only be if it doesn't meet certain criteria correct so let's think about this and yeah so if let's think about this in a, in in the context of a real project we 355 phillips park road right we just we just voted consistency on 355 Phillips and 355 Phillips. The existing building is very close to the river. It comes within what, what do we say? 15 feet at one point, something like that. All of the new area was without the 50 foot buffer so that it did not expand the nonconformity at all. And they carefully designed it so that all of the new construction on the site was was within that was outside the buffer zone from the river and they managed to design a project that did that um you know without you know and and then we asked a lot of questions about how they were going to do the construction uh so with a property so close to the river in a way that wouldn't impact the river as i read it under this uh, that 50 foot setback goes out entirely and they can just go ahead and and build certainly to the limits of the existing property but if, if i read this right they can build it a lot line they can build to the to the river wall right that's what i said exactly. in the beginning <laughs> zoning could and zoning standard for saying yes is that somebody shows up for the applicant and says well what we want to do we can't do without invading the 50 foot buffer and zoning board says well what is it you need to do and they say well we want an additional unit of residential space and a rooftop deck and then the zoning board can go oh yeah i guess you can't do that without building right to the river well, i've yeah. never seen them take place like that so it's I had a lot of discussion but but the lw what's currently in the code is the planning board issues the permit and the only circumstance they can issue a permit is is if it's a water dependent use now we're opening up waterways to more development and more impervious surfaces and the like create problems within the wetlands and flooding. Bottom line is we're going to have to do our work to, to, to discuss how this is consistent or not with the LWRP, regardless of who's going to do a permit. What's the timing on this? Wednesday. <laughs> we're we're it's, already uh, over time. We're gonna we're gonna let have me, to let, ask. Sorry, go ahead, Thomas. I uh, we, we're gonna have to ask the trustees for more time to comment on this because we're technically already over time. This came Has up very fast. On this? Hmm? Has the zoning board opined on this? 
I, we all opined on it first time around, and then this has been kicked back one more time. I don't know if they've opined this round. Christy? I think one. I not did, did, they, they did comment. I um, the zoning board did comment. I don't remember what they said. I will send that to you tomorrow. Okay. Once I once I, it'll it probably, the, it'll be a draft form. It'll be in draft form, but I will send it. The one question I'll have is whether if someone does something within fifty feet, we get brought in for some other reason anyway um if not then i agree but if so then maybe this works i'll pull up um bill sharp's memo talking about how the zoning uh, some mechanism has to be provision needs to be made for decisions of the zoning board of appeals and consistency i'll dig it up tonight so this is not framed as a very None yet either. It is not framed as a variance, no. It's there a was permit. A, one of the other choices when they were discussing what board should handle, they also discussed whether it should be a permit or it should be a variance. It, this, um, this has had a long history. It just sort of sat on the back burner for a while during COVID. So there should be some. I, I do have a question if this was circulated to the Department of State cons uh, Consistency Unit as well as uh, the DEC, because this is within wetlands and water bodies, which are definitely under their purview. And if it hasn't been circulated to them for comments, it needs to be. Because their laws come into play as well as what we do as far as consistency. I mean, we're sitting around waiting for um, the DC to, you know, you know how we coordinate with agencies? The, the Board of Trustees needs to do that, too, because this is within the 50-foot buffer of waterways. Maybe that becomes part of our recommendation. Or, yeah. Right. They, yeah, so staff they need to. You think we'll get will we get some more time on this or not? Yes, I I mean I can't speak for the board of trustees, but my assumption would be yes. I know that other boards have comments as well, so okay. um, depends. But I, I my guess is that the answer would be yes. And I, I can tell you that the zoning board was grappling with the same thing about who who should actually have the uh, jurisdiction to issue the, the deviation, and uh, they were going back and forth about it. See, Christy, what I what I want you to go back to, if you could, is I'm a baffled by this. What baffles me is I know you don't call it a variance, but it looks like one, it sounds like one, it reads like one, and it acts like one, and it follows the same verbiage. So if that's the case, who has that authority? I'm trying to think. I think it is, but I guess it's planning or zoning. Because planning can take on variances in limited circumstances under those law. Um, I'm, I honestly am not sure about planning variances. I only know about zoning. Yeah, no, there's a provision in there. They can do it on certain types of housing. You can do it on if it's a, a part of an overall project. They can be authorized by a municipality. When I said village law, I don't mean the Marinette. I mean state village law. Oh, okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, um, there's, a, there's enabling legislation behind that. Originally, right, but in that. It's usually called, but usually when it's a planning board, it's not called a variance, it's a waiver. The planning board issues waivers. No, well, uh, it's no, it's, it's called variance yeah. in some circumstances, absolutely. Well, no, because we have a floodplain variance and the uh, planning board is responsible for that. Yeah. The oh, floodplain yeah. variance is in yeah. our code right now. And this is another consideration. This is a floodplain. 50 foot buffer in rivers and 100 foot buffers in uh, tidal wetlands, these are all in the floodplains. You want time? I'll try to look at this tomorrow. I'm not sure I'll be able to, but I'll do my best by Wednesday to try to look at this if you want. That, yes, that would be helpful. I think we all need to pay attention to this one. This um, this raises substantial issues about you know. I mean, if there if there's 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 very little you could do to change village law that affects our purview more than to change how far you have to be from a water course. So, 
I uh, I'll find Bill Sharp's memo and I'll I will work on this also for our meeting on Wednesday in case we don't get an an extension. All right. So who's so who's talking to? Uh, so what's the procedure with the trustees and the extension? I think that um, whoever you want can send a letter and just. I mean, obviously, you as chair would be <laughs> the best route to do so. But send a letter and just say that you're not quite ready to determine consistency. But it's okay. very important that the board view that, that your commission has been, you know, viewing this that way. In other words, it's not just yeah. because you haven't thought about it. Uh, right. No, I can. Uh, it, this requires extensive. This this requires more extensive review than we've been, been able to give it and more attention. But we need we need more time. I will get that out tomorrow. William, I'll work with. I'll call you in the morning. And we'll we'll just crank that out. Well, question for you: uh, If that's the case, does the board need to vote in order to send that letter out? I don't know. No, it's just an administrative action. Nope, that's administrative. Okay. No, not. Extension. Okay, fair enough. Okay, we have uh, run our agenda items, unless, uh, and we managed to uh, we managed to get through all the things that we usually push to the very end, and then end up kicking over to the next meeting. So that's good. Thank you all for your patience. And, uh, and for your focus, I think we're all a little uh, more awake this time than we have been at the discussion at the administrative part of other meetings. Um, unless someone has something else they want to raise now, um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you very much, and I will see you the day after tomorrow. See you Wednesday. Bye, everyone. Welcome, Amber.